Welcome to the call, a weekly sport fishing debate show. I'm Dave Mercer. And I'm Matt Pangrak. And this week's topic is the Carolina rig is back. The Carolina rig will make a huge comeback in professional tournaments. What say you, Panger? Well, you've been the guy who's been on stage calling all these guys who have won on Carolina rigs over the past month. So I want to get your point of view first, because I am extremely passionate about this topic, Dave. You're very passionate. People are passionate about the Carolina rig. And, and I think they're about to get a lot more passionate about it because I think just simply because of one technology, the most talked about technology in the sport, forward-facing sonar is the reason that the Carolina rig is making such a big comeback. Just simply because fish are moving further from the boat, anglers are having to get techniques that they can cast further from the boat that are still effective. There's often times where you, you can cast things really far, but you may not hook up with that fish and boat that fish. A Carolina rig, you can cast it a full freaking click a bomber and you're still going to catch them. You're, you've got good hookup percentage. Get that fish back in the boat. So I say, yes, the Carolina rig is definitely the next big thing again. Listen, I think this year was a fluke. 2022 is a fluke. Listen, I understand the Carolina rig in, in Florida, buggy, buddy gross, catching them on it. I think what we saw with, with Schmidt and Austin Felix, this thing has been around since the beginning of time, since the scuppernog flavored jelly worm, since the Texas rig guys have been doing this for years. There's a reason why it fell out of favor because there were more effective ways to target fish, Dave. And I think that it was, it was just a, a circumstance, a fluke. I think maybe, you know, it kind of got into people's subconscious and they might have tied one on because someone caught it before. But even the guys who have caught them on it, with few exception, will say it is not their favorite technique. It is not their go to technique. When was the last time you saw a primary guy whose go to, his bread and butter was the Carolina rig do well? They're not on tour anymore or they're finishing last. You know why? Because you have biffle heads and drop shots and Nico rigs and you bring the forward facing sonar into it. I think the Carolina rig is more effective without it because you can use it and people used it back in the day to determine bottom composition, to catch fish that are roaming. Now there are much more effective delivery systems. You can put a three quarter ounce on a drop shot. You can have a heavy Nico. Most of these fish are suspended, which is why you want that bait floating around in the back. You can put a bait right on a fish's nose. And all the Carolina rig does is make it like you're catfishing out there and take time away from it. There are very specific circumstances where it works. Like when Austin Felix used it on the second half of the Oahe tournament, or on a heavily curated fishery with smallmouth that are targeting things at the bottom, like at Thousand Islands or a, a light Carolina rig in the in the grass. But I mean, if, if that was a day in and day out technique that was effective, you'd see Peter T win in three quarters of a million dollars every single year on it still, and he'd still be on the Elite Series kicking everybody's butt. I think it can be effective, but I don't think it's back. I think it was just a small little freak of nature that we had a section of Carolina rig and now everybody's going to throw a Carolina rig and leave fish in the water. You're wrong. You're wrong. You, you are part of the reason that nobody talks about the Carolina rig because of media folks like yourself that have gone out of their way for years to talk about all oh, the rig, all oh, the chain ball and chain and make it seem like it's something negative. I think what we saw at Oahe was a very interesting thing. And when you go to fisheries that receive very little pressure, they, are affected by pressure a lot quicker. And I think we saw a case study of what's going to happen to a lot of our fisheries as forward facing sonar advances. There was nobody fishing that way at Oahe or a very small percentage of people fishing that way. If you talk to anglers and pre-fish, those fish were literally chewing the side off their, not their bait, but off their boat. And all of a sudden, day after day, it got worse and worse. And those fish started moving further and further from the boat. And that is why the Carolina rig shined. That's why it got better as, the, as it went on, because the techniques that they were using earlier didn't continue to work. So you said yourself, I mean, it can work in Florida. It can work in New York. It can work in, in Oahe. Where can't it work? I say, you're wrong, Panger. You might hate it, but it's back. And things come back. I mean, bell bottoms came back. Fanny packs came back. I mean, everything comes back. And the Carolina rig is back, baby. I'm calling it. I don't think it's back. You can tie your egg sinker to your rod and break it in half when you cast it because it's been slapping up against it. Break your leader line on the hook set. 
Listen, have you ever heard of anyone under 75 years old utter the phrase, I can't wait to go throw a Carolina rig? No, but I also, I mean, what, it's not about waiting. It's about, it's competitive fishing. It's using it's the tech fishing with some... a soft plastic. There's why? so many more effective. Then why did we, in what, why are all these other techniques and bottom oriented techniques have been invented since then to where there's been so many more wins on these than the Carolina rig. If the Carolina rig was that effective, shouldn't there be two or three wins a year on it? Just like when we you, you go up north and you know there's going to be two or three wins a year on a drop shot, or hey, this is a this is a, a biffle bug. Like even on even on Carolina rig lakes, there are three or four other techniques that will be, that will work in the top ten. That have worked. I think it's You're right. a very specific time, very specific in the hands of the right guy. I, I don't think it, it it's it will ever come back as universal coast to coast. But isn't that what proficient is? Finding the Nuance on top of the nuance. I mean, they, all these anglers, whether whatever tour it is, you hear them week after week talk about how everybody finds everything. But the guy who wins is the angler that figures out not just to find them, but the exact technique. And and things come back, Panger. I mean, it, it's been away a long time, and I get I it. Agree. It has hey. been replaced by things like the biffle bug and hard heads and things like that. But but I think they're about to be replaced by the you Carolina. You want to go out there with your 5,600 and nylon line and six-foot pistol grip and bill bottoms? Start slinging it. With a fanny pack. <laughs> I, I really think it's time for the fanny pack. It, never mind the Carolina rig. The fanny pack needs to come back, Panger. I mean, of all times, you know, back in the day, the only people that really needed it was people that sold steroids or drugs. I mean, and they yeah. were... PL3, well, no, like FLW. That. Do you not remember the battery packs for FLW back That's in the day? Right. You had the they man with the, those. the guy with the land of lake and a big boom camera over him, and he had his fanny pack on the side. You're right. You're right. Well, that I think two it's or time. Three years. I mean, we, those guys we, said it weighed like six pounds, too. Oh, that'd be horrible. But I'm tired of carrying my phone and all my other crap. So I think fanny packs should come back, and I believe the Carolina rig's back. But it doesn't matter what we think. Let us know what you think. Is the Carolina rig going to come back? I'm keeping it. Panger is culling it.